I wanted a lamp for over by my milling machine, since the machine itself kind of casts a shadow on the workpiece. I had a scrap of copper sheet laying around, so I thought it would be pretty cool to build it out of copper. The sheet is 8 by 5 and 40 thousandths thick. This is going to be the shade of the lamp, and I'm going to try to form it into a half round bowl sort of shape. I've got the sheet sitting up on a sandbag, so that as I hammer it, it'll conform and should let me shape the copper how I want to. I'm just starting out really slowly, working a little bit in the middle of this sheet. I didn't want to try to move too much metal too fast and cause a crack. After a few minutes of working this, you can tell it starts to get stiffer, so it needs to be annealed. I'm just using a propane torch to heat it up. I was somewhat concerned the first time about overheating it, but after I did it a few times I was more confident and could do it much quicker. You want to look for the copper to turn black. Right after it turns black it'll start to glow a real dull red, and that means it's fully annealed. After that I'll just let it cool off on its own, and then start working it some more with the hammer and sandbag. I just repeated those steps of hammering it and then annealing it over and over until I was happy with the shape of the shade. It took quite a few cycles of hammering and annealing to get the round shape I was looking for. Once it started getting pretty close, I started working from the opposite side. This is going to form the area where the light socket meets up with the shade. With the shape nearly complete, I trimmed the excess off of the edges to give it a nice even uniform look. Then I just finished up with the hammer to even out all the last spots. With the shade pretty much complete, it's time to move on to some other parts. The plan is to use two pieces of half inch copper pipe as the arm of the light. Since half inch copper has a 5 8 diameter OD, I've got some 5 8 brass rod in the lathe and I'm turning down a shoulder on it so it'll be a snug tap in fit inside of the half inch copper pipe. These brass pieces will turn into the pivots, or hinges, of the light. I made a total of five pieces and cut them off at the bandsaw about three quarters of an inch long. Over at the mill, the first thing I did was trim these down to all the same length, just over five-eighths of an inch. Then I machined off half of the diameter using a five-eighths end mill. Next I set up for some drilling. Three of these parts got a quarter inch through hole and a 3 8 spot face. The remaining two were drilled and then tapped quarter 20. Then I tapped those parts into each end of the half inch copper pipe and radiused it over with the belt sander. This way it can fully pivot back and forth 180 degrees. The last part of the hinge system is the lower part which will thread into a spare magnetic base. This way I can quickly reposition the light or move it from one machine to another. I turned down a short section of the brass to 5 16 and then threaded it with a die.
Then it was back over to the mill, where I used a hex collet block to turn a hex on the part so I can tighten it into the mag base. The part was then finished off like the previous hinge parts. Half of the diameter was milled away, and then it was drilled and tapped quarter twenty. The final brass piece is a flange, made out of one inch diameter bar stock. It will serve to attach the light socket to the first short section of copper pipe. The first step was to turn down a short section of it to be a tap in fit to the half inch copper pipe, just like the previous parts. Then a radius tool bit was used to give it a radius from 5 eighths out to 1 inch. The part was then drilled out in preparation for threading. But first it was flipped around and faced down to length. I took a small section of inch and a quarter copper pipe. This is going to conceal the light socket and mount to the shade. I cut off the piece that I needed, and then the scrap I cut open on the bandsaw. I annealed the piece to make it softer to work with, and then bent it open and hammered it flat. I used the inch and a quarter pipe as a guide, traced out a circle, and then cut it out. This piece is going to be a cap on one end of the inch and a quarter pipe. After cleaning up the surfaces with some sandpaper, I clamped the parts together in the vise to hold them nice and tight with no gaps. I tacked this together every half inch or so around the pipe, so I could do the finished welding with the part not in the vise. Now it was on to welding this up. The trick to welding copper is to move fast. Get on the amperage soon and keep moving. If you try to go slow and hold a puddle, it'll just blow through. This is pretty thin wall stuff, and I've got my machine turned up to a max of about 180 amps for this. I didn't use it all, all the time, but at the start you definitely want to get on it fast and get moving. For filler wire I'm just using regular 14 gauge house wire that I stripped the insulation off of. After going all the way around I cleaned up the welds on the sanding belt and then headed over to the lathe. I checked it up in the three jaw and then used a unit bit to put a hole in it. This is where the lamp wires will come down through. Now it's time to test fit the light socket into the piece we made to cover it. I tapped the brass flange piece onto a small section of half inch copper pipe and then threaded it onto the socket. The fit up seemed fine, so it was time to weld the socket cover onto the light shade. Here you can see that I drilled a small hole, and this is just to add a spot weld for extra strength. Then I worked my way around the lap joint, moving around about a half inch section at a time. After getting all the way around, I smoothed the welds down with some sandpaper. These were the only parts that I didn't have to make for the project. I had these small thumbscrew knobs laying around from some previous idea. 
They have a nice 3 8 shoulder on them so that when you tighten them up, they will draw the two parts of the pivot together and lock the lamp arm in place. So that's everything made. Off camera I used the buffing wheel to polish up each part. I also drilled some small holes so that the wire could be run inside the copper pipe. Assembly is as easy as using the thumb screws to hold the arm segments together. From up close, it doesn't have a perfectly smooth, mirrored surface finish, but that's not really what I was going for. I know it's going to get bumped and banged around, so I wasn't concerned with spending too much time on the finish. This is also why I didn't want to clear coat it. I know as is it will tarnish over time, but some metal polish can quickly brighten it back up. If I sprayed it with clear, I know that over time it will get bumped and spots of clear will chip off. Then you're left with tarnished spots and no easy way to shine them back up without messing up the clear coat around them. It has a range of about two feet tall or two feet reach and anywhere in between. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's a pretty cool shop light. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.